When Mount St. Helens blew its top in 1980, it wasn't a surprise that it happened, but even today, the extent of the damage is hard to fathom. It began with the largest landslide in recorded history that uncorked an explosion that was directed horizontally and leveled the forest to 13 miles out from the volcano. It knocked down 100-foot trees like matchsticks and killed just about everything in its path. It was just a, a barren landscape, gray and, and pumice-colored, covered with rocks. Ever since, the mountain has hardly been quiet, with several smaller eruptions. But of course, nothing like what happened here in 1980. Dead tree trunks still litter the landscape. But look closely. Something else is erupting here. Life. It's a rare opportunity for scientists to get to study a devastated area and how it comes back from scratch in such detail. With help from the National Science Foundation, evolutionary biologist John Bishop is documenting the return of living things to the once lifeless mountain. Up until uh, the last 10 years, the landscape has been completely dominated by lupin. Bishop says these flowering lupin plants are able to create new soil from volcanic ash. That new soil has created a habitat for the Sitka willow. But there's a problem. One of the things we've realized about these willows is that they're not getting big. And that's important because they create habitat for birds and mammals. So you can see, you get a whole bunch of these inside and they're gonna kill the stem. These weevils are an invasive species and they're on the attack, taking up residence inside the willow stems, stunting their growth or killing them. Seemingly insignificant organisms like insects that consume plants play an extraordinarily important role in in the sorting out process of deciding, essentially, which plants are going to stay in the landscape and which ones are going to disappear. Bishop says plants and insects will battle back and forth here for centuries. It's how nature balances out the ecosystem until the day Mount St. Helens changes the equation once again. For Science Nation, I'm Miles O'Brien.